Lately, what I keep seeing in the media is that conservatives are fleeing traditional social media for the safety of an echo chamber. Echo chambers being Parler, MeWe, Gab, places like that. This is total BS. It's total BS for two basic reasons. The first is most people, and I'm one of them, who are moving to these alternate social media sites aren't leaving the old ones at least right away. I mean, I have enrolled in MeWe, Gab, and Parler, but I'm still on you know, the ones I was always on. I'm still on YouTube. I'm still on Facebook. I'm still on Twitter. I'm still on LinkedIn. I'm not running from anyone. I'm not incapable of working and operating and arguing outside of my so-called echo chamber. I don't have a problem at all. I know the routine. They say something. I make a counter argument. I get called a racist or I'm told I watch Fox News too much. <laughs> That's the usual routine. It's been going on for four years. You know, I can handle that. I haven't given up on these other sites yet. I'm just moving over and expanding into these other areas so that when the time's ready to go, I have a place to move. It has nothing to do with echo chambers. It's just, it's just nonsense. I can argue. I can argue. I can argue my case all day. I can argue till I'm blue in the face. That has nothing to do with it. I'm not fleeing, you know, the sound of people saying things I don't like about the country or Trump or myself. That's not the issue at all. The problem isn't what goes on there with regard to you know, car confrontations and arguments and debates. The problem is what goes on with these sites affecting me personally. That's the second point. Why have I moved? Now, I can, I'm speaking here of myself personally. I can't speak for every conservative who's on social media. I haven't had any problems with LinkedIn. I, I don't really spend a lot of time there anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I wouldn't miss it if it's gone. I'm retired now. I'm not worried about employment opportunities or, or making social contacts or business contacts, any of that stuff. So there's no problem there. I have not had a problem on YouTube with my own channel. It hasn't happened yet. Not so on Facebook. I have had problems on Facebook. I mean, one of the reasons I ended up on YouTube was Facebook wouldn't let me post videos. They took that away. They didn't tell me why. I said something in some video that they didn't like or ran afoul of them, but they never said exactly what it was. I just lost my right to post new videos for 30 days. So I switched over and started doing YouTube videos and reposting them on Facebook to get, get around it. Uh, but that happened. Uh, I've had several videos blocked. Uh, one time, I think I had 12 in one day disappeared. And, and they sent me a notification saying you're taking down, you know, terms of uh, use or whatever their usual excuses. But they all involved China and COVID-19. It was when they were cracking down on anybody saying anything about the link between this virus and China of, of any kind. And I hadn't posted anything saying, uh, you know, the Chinese created in a lab and loosed it on the world purposely. That's not what I said. I just was reposting articles saying, you know, it came from China. There was a lab in Wuhan, and there didn't seem to be any evidence that it came out of some wet market. That was enough to get me taken down. I've been warned about things, uh, some really strange things. One time I had a post, and this is when you realize people are going back through, somebody is going back through your social media posts looking for something. I had a post that I had put up about nine months before, was flagged and taken down following a complaint. Now, <laughs> who's looking at nine-year-old Facebook posts that I've made? It's somebody purposely looking for something that they can say, flag that and, you know, get me in trouble. Maybe they can get a strike against me or whatever you call it on Facebook. So that's rather strange. But the strangest thing that happened to me on Facebook happened recently. 
I was reading something somewhere, and apparently this Islamic group, which has a, a Facebook uh, subpage, you know, for their group, they had post, posted a picture of a young girl, maybe early teens, short, confronting this big black garbed policeman, you know, totally covered, helmet, face mask, everything's black, automatic weapon. And she's confronting him. She's got this scowl on her face. And they had posted it as, you know, Palestinian girl confronts Israeli soldier on West Bank or something like that. The picture was kind of strange because usually if you have young teens who are Muslims on the West Bank, they're usually going to have a headscarf on, a uh, hijab. And she did. Her hair was out full. She had a little makeup on, you know, the whole bit. So it did look odd. Well, apparently other people thought it looked odd. And somebody in, I think it was the Hindustan Times, tracked down the picture, which I guess is pretty easy to do on Google today. You take a picture and you can search. And they found that it was actually a, a several-year-old photo of a confrontation in Argentina between a young Argentinian woman and an Argentinian cop or special you know, SWAT kind of cop. And this Muslim group had posted it as something that happened on the West Bank in 2020. I think it was like 2017 or 2016, something like that. So the Hindustan Times had broken the story that this group was, you know, publishing fake news. And, and Facebook, to its credit, basically took it down and put up this link to the story in the Hindustan Times, which concluded and documented that this was a fake video. This was a video from Argentina, not from the West Bank. And it was a video from several years ago, not this year. So that was interesting. So I went to that site. I found the Facebook link to the Hindustan Times. I clicked on the link. It took me to the Hindustan Times article. And then I reposted it on Facebook with this note about what had happened. Facebook's response to that was to flag my post and take it down and sent me a notification that I was guilty of hate speech. I was guilty of hate speech. For doing what? For reposting the article that they had posted on their response to this a uh, Muslim website, a Palestinian website. I hadn't done anything that they hadn't done themselves. And yet, you know, bingo, if I don't agree that it gets taken down, I won't be able to do anything on my account until I agree. So I agreed and I sent them a you know, nasty email. I didn't get a response. So that's the kind of thing that happens to me on Facebook. They sent me a list a couple of weeks ago uh, to what point, I don't know, but it was a list of the last six months they had, they had flagged or taken down or blocked 36 of my Facebook posts. I mean, I hadn't been keeping count. And then they linked that to a policy. And when I went to that policy, it was if you have too many things taken down, they can suspend your account. They can cancel your account. They can ban you from Facebook forever. Now, they didn't actually threaten to do any of those things directly, but the implications were pretty clear that for somehow they were, they had their eye on me, at least their algorithms had their eye on me. Not that I'm that big. I think I have like 600, 600 friends on Facebook, but that they were doing stuff to me. So that's when I started thinking, you know, I, if I'm going to lose this account, I better start moving somewhere else so I can post there because I don't know how much longer you know, what's going to happen the next time I post something that they don't like on Facebook. Twitter's an entirely different story. And I've had problems over the last two years on Twitter. Now, I don't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. I don't even, I almost got 10,000 once. But I guess the average, I forget how many followers is the average. It's in the low hundreds of Twitter. So when you get over 5,000, I guess you're doing above average. And so I guess my account is above average. And I had no problem until I got up, about two years ago, I got up to 75, uh, it was like 74 and change 
followers on Twitter. And I was just going up, you know, I was spending roughly the same amount of time every day and tweeting and retweeting and posting some stuff. And I would go up, you know, I'd get so many responses and I'd get, you know, so many of this and so many of that and pick up new followers. And I was going up and up and up. As soon as I got close to 7,500, all of a sudden I'm not getting any responses, no retweets, no new followers. You know, I get maybe one or two a day and I will lose clumps of followers. One day it was like 230 people suddenly stopped following me. Now I said something, I sent something off and they said, well, it's, you know, they, they periodically sweep through the accounts and get rid of bogus fake accounts. So I said, okay, well, you know, maybe that's true. But after all, this was the first time this had happened. So I went and I looked. Now, you know, most of the accounts that I follow, I don't remember who these people are. They're, they're just there. But there were a couple accounts of, you know, people, uh, well, I don't want to mention any names, but I don't want to, but these, these were notable people, especially in the field of, mid, of the Middle East, whom I followed. And suddenly I realized, because I have a little program I can go in and look, I wasn't following them anymore. And they weren't following me. But they hadn't been removed. They hadn't been canceled. They were still there. They weren't, you know, bogus bot accounts that they had closed. They had cut me following them and them following me. And that's how they were getting my numbers down. The other way they started to do it, so I got back up towards 7,500 again. And the next time it wasn't so blatant. Instead of like a mass calling where I lost, you know, several hundred in one day. Actually, it was one night. You go to bed at night and you're at like 7,453. Uh, 7, and you woke up, you know, I woke up, I was like 7,120. Like in one night? You know, how, how does this happen? So the second time I got up near 7,500, the same thing happened, but instead of it happening in a big chunk, I was losing 15 to 25 a day, every day, every day. And no matter what I did, I would do the same things. I'd spend the same amount of time on Twitter, uh, posting and reposting and, and doing this and doing that. My followers just kept dropping. And sometimes, I again, I'd check my little unfollower app that I have, and it would say, you know, you had three people who unfollowed you yesterday. But I looked at the numbers and I've just lost 27 people, 27 followers. Where'd the other 24 go? Who were they? You know, it, it, what's going on here? And then this would go on almost like clockwork, 30 days. 30 days it would stop. And I'd start doing my regular thing again. And bang, oh, I go right back up to 7,500. And this time I blew through. And I got up to 99.70 something. And at the rate I was going, I thought, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm probably going to be above 10,000. Nope. This was right before the election. I wake up and I'm down. I went, you know, I'm down to like, uh, you know, 98, 80 or something. So I lost all these followers. And I go to my little app and it doesn't show. It says you lost like three followers. But I hadn't gained anybody. And all of a sudden, like instead of waking up and having, you know, 20 uh, comments to, to go through, if you want to go through them, I'd have two or three, sometimes none. It's like nothing I posted the day before was retweeted or commented upon, commented upon by anyone. It was just like the things weren't there. And I'm thinking, I'm shadow banned. But this time it's lasted longer than 30 days. It's still going on. So basically what I've done on my Twitter account is just I, I barely do anything up there because no matter what I do, it's just a waste of time. I know that the next morning I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have lost, you know, a score of followers. It's like clockwork, day in, day out. I go to bed at night, wake up the next morning, I'm down, you know, 15 to 30 followers. And that's the way it's been going now for more than 30 days. So this is something that was done to me permanently. And, you know, they don't know anything. They just send you these form things. And there's really no point in complaining because I know what's going on. That's why I got fed up. And that's why I moved to these alternative accounts. It's not that I'm, I'm afraid to debate. I'm afraid, you know, people are going to call me a racist or a fascist. That happens all the time. It doesn't bother me at all. And this is happening 
you know, while the Republicans are in power. What's going to happen if and when Biden becomes president and these guys, you know, have a run of the house? I don't think it's going to get better. I mean, I know there are some people who think, well, if Biden wins, the pressure will be released because they're in power and they've got what they want. I don't think so at all. I think the pressure is going to increase. I think they're going to be worse. I think there's going to be more censorship, more attempt to shut alternative speech down because once they get power, they don't want to lose it. And the social media giants don't want to lose their power. So that's why, you know, speaking here for myself, that's why I moved. It has nothing to do with echo chambers. It has everything to do with censorship. I'm not moving. I am fleeing. I'm like a, a social media refugee, you know, getting dual citizenship so that when the time comes, I can pack my bags and go to a new country, which is basically how I see it. That's my story. If you have one of your own? Let me know in a comment. If you can, share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, Maybe if I can get more subscriptions and my numbers go up, I can get banned on YouTube as well. Who can say? But whatever. Subscribe to the channel. Help me out here. And until the next time, keep fighting.